The Positron IDE makes data scientists so much more productive. Whether you are using R or Python, the Positron IDE helps you with a whole bunch of typical data science tasks. And in today's video, I'll show you five more productivity hacks that help you in your day-to-day -day business. So with that said, let's dive in. So coming from our studio, one of the main drawbacks of Positron that I felt on a day-to-day -day business was the absence of our studio projects. You know, Positron has like a similar concept with folders and when I have Positron open, I can just manually switch to a different folder. Here I'm switching to my project that contains my newsletters. By the way, I'm also writing an email newsletter. You should join. In any case, Positron allows me to switch between projects really easily but with our studio it has been way easier. For example, if I were to go into the YouTube videos directory using my application launcher that I have on my computer, then I could just look for an R project file and then open this up and then our studio would open this project for me and I would be inside of the YouTube videos project. And because this is a file, I could use my application launcher to just manually type in the name of the project and then access this R project file to open up the project inside of R Studio. This one kind of takes long to load, but there it is. This is usually what my workflow was when I was still using R Studio. With Positron, out of the box, this is not possible. But thankfully, there is a workaround. You could use your application launcher and then type in something like pause as in Positron and then look for your project name. Let's look for the 30 day chart challenge project that I have. And then the same thing happens as I click on this, my Positron project or my directory is open and I am where I want it to be. So when you have a whole bunch of projects like me and you need to switch between them every now and then, not every now and then, like constantly, then it helps to have this kind of workflow. And the way I made this work is to use an extension called Project Manager. Inside of this extension, you can either save a favorite. So for example, I could save this project here and now it would be among my favorites. But what's even more convenient is that I can use git based directories where I simply inside of the settings specify that all the projects I want to see in my project manager, for example, live in my directory called our projects and all the subdirectories that are also git repositories will be detected by this project manager. And if not, I can still jump into this project manually and then save it here. So you're obviously wondering, okay, how do I install this magic project manager? Well, glad that you asked. All you have to do is go inside the extensions and then look for the project manager. I'm using this one here. And once you've installed it, you will have this window open here or not this window. You have this option on the left and then you can just work with your projects as is. Now, this setup still requires that you open up Positron, go into this tab here, into this project manager and then open up the project that you're looking for. But this is not this smooth kind of workflow I have described earlier. You know, the one where I was just typing in pause as in Positron and then open up anything I felt like opening and then Positron would do that. And here is where you kind of have to install something depending on your application launcher that you're using. I'm using the Albert application launcher that has conveniently the same name as I do. And inside of this application launcher, I can look for plugins. And there is the Positron projects plugin that allows you to do exactly what I've described. And if you want to install this kind of plugin, then you will have to look into the GitHub repository of the repo for this kind of extensions. And since it didn't exist before, I wrote it for you and I've documented all the requirements that you need to use this as well as how to set this up. This launcher works on Ubuntu that I use and macOS as well, but on macOS things might not work out exactly because I couldn't test it. Feel free to open up an issue if there is trouble. But I am guessing if you're using macOS and you're using an application launcher, then you're probably using the Alfred application launcher, for which there's also an extension that allows you to do the same kind of workflow with the application manager. So these two links will be in the description of this video. Feel free to check that out if you want to set up this 
this workflow for yourself as well. Next, let us talk about the layout. You can see here inside of Positron, I have a two column layout, and this is something I have created using this side by side layout. But still, I applied a couple of tweaks, and the most notable tweak is that my explorer, my file explorer, is on the right side too. By default it is kind of over here so that you have to open up this third sidebar on the left to look at your files. But one thing I noticed is that now I kind of have three columns. Sometimes I have to look at the files. Sometimes I want to work with my session here directly and do some quick maps. And sometimes I want to look into the terminal to do, I don't know, git status to check what is the status of my git repository. You know, typical things you do with the terminal. But at some point I realized on the left, I really only use this explorer here. All the other things are something I occasionally use, but rarely. So I just dragged and dropped it over here. I got rid of this here. And now if I go into Zen mode using Control K and Z, then I have a smooth two column workflow here or is two column layout here. What's more, I have combined this with shortcuts, Control one, two, three, and four. So with Control one, I can be inside of here. In Control two, I can immediately do more quick math in my R console. Control 3 allows me to do stuff inside of my terminal and Control 4 allows me to jump into the Explorer to see what kind of files I have here in my directory. So with Control 1, 2, 3 and 4, so if I were to use Control 1 again, I will have gone full circle and then I am back inside of my coding window here. So that's my setup that I use. But there's one thing you have to be careful of, namely when I am inside of my terminal, it used to be that I would do Control 4, but nothing happens. And the reason why is because sometimes the terminal actually eats up your shortcuts because it thinks you're trying to do terminal specific stuff instead of trying to act inside of Positron. And the way to fix that is to inside of your user settings to enable one thing, actually two things, namely this terminal integrated send key bindings to shell, set that to false and also skip a couple of commands that are supposed to be sent to the shell. And that is in this case, Workbench View Explorer. And once you have that, you can set key bindings like I've described with control one, two, three, and four, and then things work out pretty well. Speaking about shortcuts, there are more shortcuts I have learned as I worked with Positron. And one shortcut that I cannot stress enough is the control shift P shortcut that allows you to open up the command palette. And for example, if I realized I need to install an extension, I will just look for extensions. There is focus on extensions. And then I have my annoying sidebar open again so that I can look for an extension. And then when I don't need it, I can just throw it out. And then I got rid of it again. But that's the typical shortcut that you will need everywhere. And this is why I've mentioned this first thing in my previous Positron video. But a couple of more shortcuts that I learned are Control P to look for files. So I could look for say recording if i spell it correctly recording you'd see that i have a whole bunch of recording.r files inside of my youtube videos projects i have been doing this for a long time now and my folder proves that for me and if i were to select one of those let's just go with the shiny optimized video where i was showing tricks how to optimize your shiny apps, you'd see that this file opened up for me. Similarly, there's another shortcut I learned that helps you to find specific functions. In our studio, it used to be control dot, and I was kind of missing this feature in Positron, but I figured it must be available since this is VS Code under the hood. So I went on a search and actually the command you're looking for is control T, and then you could look for some function name. Let's say, let's look for something that's starts with get and you can see here there are also some false positives like tech stock prices which is something I have declared in apparently this recording here and there is GET inside of it but with other characters in between so this is why it was found but if we look again there's also a get golem config file which might be something I'm looking for. So with this kind of fuzzy search it's really convenient to navigate to functions that you're trying to change inside of your your project and now that I can use this feature I am actually using it quite a lot and especially in large projects this is convenient and speaking about large projects it can happen 
that you have long scripts. For example, let's just go for control P, let's look for recording. And I know that in my DB plier video from last week, I had a long script where I was showing how to translate typical SQL into smooth dplyr workflow code. And in here I have a whole bunch of queries that are first given as SQL and then shown as how to do it with dbplyr. And the thing I did to break down this script is to use these dashes here inside of comments to break things down. And the nice thing is if you're doing control shift P again and look for outline, you can focus on the outline view and see here the outline of your project and there you could jump to specific sections of your code and for example if i want to add another one let's do this one here here i've explained how to join database tables so let's do join tables and then add dashes until this stuff appears inside of the outline here so that's basically how you use the outline i know in my last positron video i said i don't really need it and that's why i hit it but i guess in some cases i'm actually looking for this and this is why in that case I do use the control palette and look for outline to show me the outline of my document. Now before I show you the last thing and something that was actually one of the most frequently asked questions inside of my R Studio productivity video. Before I show you that, let me remind you to hit the like button if you like this video so far. This doesn't take a lot of effort, but it really goes a long way for me to support this channel. So if you are enjoying this video, thank you for hitting the like button. And now let me show you the last thing that I want to show you. And that is rainbow indentations. You can see here inside of my script, I do have these indentations that are highlighted via these colored blocks. And this is something I've actually used in R Studio before. And in my R Studio productivity video, people were asking me all the time, how do you get these kind of blocks? And now that I think about it, they are actually asking me in other videos, how did I create this? Because in the productivity video, I'm showing them how to get this. But my point still remains, I was asked that a lot. How do we get these rainbow indents? And in this case, in Positron, it's actually pretty easy. All you have to do is to look into your extensions and then look for rainbow indent. And if you do, there is indent minus rainbow. Once you've installed that, you will have nice rainbow indentations. Sweet. With that, we have covered five productivity tricks to make your workflow inside of Positron even smoother. I'm sure there's much more tweaking that you can do in Positron and I'm curious to hear what you are using Positron with. You know, what kind of things are you trying out to be more productive? Feel free to let me know in the comments. I'm looking forward to incorporating some of these cool tricks into my workflow as well. Again, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And now with all of that said, I say thank you for watching and I will see you next time.